I've been researching nuclear batteries uh, for quite a few years now and I don't do a lot of research because let's face it they they work we've been using them for years and the technology although it's not been hidden it's not a conspiracy it's not a promoted uh, technology it's not the kind of technology that is outspoken ever so when I see adverts for ever ready batteries energizers and Duracell batteries I get really really annoyed especially when we can have rechargeable batteries lithium ion batteries or nickel metal hydride batteries which last far further than any Duracell and any EverEdy battery. I've got nickel metal hydride batteries which outperform the lithium ion non rechargeable Duracell batteries easily, absolutely easily. And they cost less. <laughs> they cost less than Duracell batteries. Okay, admittedly, the charger to charge them in an hour cost a lot of money uh, in comparison, but when you look at the amount of times these batteries have been charged they completely outweigh the cost of the Duracell batteries if you're buying you know, 100, 200 sets of lithium ion non rechargeable Duracell batteries anyway back onto nuclear batteries and the cost of nuclear batteries there's four main types of nuclear battery and we're disregarding the nuclear generators here the non portable thermal electric or nuclear electric generators which could be stored underneath your house. We're looking at direct charging generators or direct charging batteries which are basically beta voltaic batteries although slightly different. Optoelectrical nuclear batteries and radioisotope piezoelectric generators. Now a radioisotope piezoelectric generator which is a right mouthful to say is basically a piezoelectric material next to a radioisotope and the radioisotope emits beta particles towards the piezoelectric we're looking for a negative charge when the piezoelectric becomes negatively charged it starts to warp and become deformed now certain radioisotopes when they lose their negative or negativity they become positively charged so when you've got a negatively charged piezoelectric thing <laughs> and a radioisotope coated thing and they come together when one's positively and one's negatively charged they cause a spark when the electrons flow from one to the other the positively charged radioisotope coated thing regains its negativity because all the negative charge comes from the piezoelectric and just zooms straight across and at which point you, you connect the circuit between the two you're going to get a charge, you're going to get a current. You get enough of these within a cell working constantly. But like a set of points in an old car. And you get enough of them working together, you're going to have a constant current coming out of this thing. It becomes a radioisotope piezoelectric battery or generator. There you go, that's how that works. They work, they're not theoretical they've been built today and they're used out and about in such certain secret places although the, although the technology isn't secret the places where they're used are secret and then the, the actual ins and outs of how to make them are secret then we've got optical optoelectric nuclear batteries now basically what they are is a glass tube or a see-through tube which is filled with a luminescent gas and a radioactive material or a radioisotope and because the beta or alpha emissions from that radioisotope element excite the gas the gas then glows and becomes bright like a fluorescent tube 
Now if you encase that fluorescent tube now in a container, none of the light escapes. But if you put if you line the inside of that container with photoelectric cells, i.e. solar panels, you've got a battery. Hey presto, fantastic, we've got a battery. Again, it's a technology that works. And then we're looking at direct charging or beta voltaics. Now, radio isotopes give off certain types of emissions. There's two types of beta emissions, and there's alpha emissions, and so on and so forth. But there's three types of beta emissions. Anyway, but the basic gist of things are that if you have a negative beta emission and a positive alpha emission you get what I'm saying, you've got a positive and a negative there you go, your battery, simple and simple, you know what I mean and we can make them, we do make them and they are being used, I wouldn't be surprised if Voyager spacecraft's got one on um, some pacemakers used to have these kind of batteries in I think watches, some watches contain these kind of batteries and because aluminium is a perfectly natural shield to these emissions all you've got to do is encase the materials or the whole battery inside a aluminium casing and hey presto it's not dangerous to human life at all